Today, we talk about live video streaming. This show is for everyone working at the coalface. Digital, business, marketing, social. This is At The Cold Face with your host, Jason Greenwood. Hello everybody, I'm Jason Greenwood. Welcome to episode 52 of At The Cold Face. If you haven't checked out episode 51 yet, definitely do so. Had a fantastic interview uh, with Peter Ratcliffe from Australia, from Retail Apparel Group, and he dropped a lot of information in there that I think you're gonna find really, really interesting. So if you haven't checked it out yet, definitely go check it out. For today's episode, I wanna talk a little bit about live streaming, the different platforms that you can live stream on, what the major differences are, why you might wanna choose one platform or another, the benefits, the pros, the cons, and some of the other things. Some of the, so some of the high level strategy stuff, but also some, a little bit more of the nitty gritty, a little bit more of the tactical stuff. Um, some of the differences uh, between the major platforms. Also wanna talk about some of the limitations that are, that, that's coming to live streaming um, and some of the things around what kind of music you can use, how that gets interjected into your live streaming, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, uh, th some of the things like equipment, audio gear, microphones, that sort of stuff. So I just want to cover that stuff off in brief, won't go into huge amount of detail, but 2017 is going to be the, the year of live streaming. It's absolutely becoming one of the hottest topics in terms of content generation, in terms of content creation, in terms of communicating messages. It really came into its own in 2016, and in 2017, it's absolutely one of the types of content that most digital marketers are focusing on, and definitely personal brands are focusing very, very heavily on in 2017. Speaking for me personally, I'm starting to do a lot more live streaming, starting to do it across most major platforms, doing it primarily on Facebook Live. I definitely think that's the one that I spend the most time doing live streaming on. Also doing a bit on, on Twitter slash Periscope. I'm um, starting to do a little bit on YouTube Live as well. And then a, a lesser amount on Instagram Live. Not that I don't think Instagram Live has its place, but as we'll get to in a moment, I think it's got a, a, di a slightly different place than where I'm going just at the moment. So, um, well, in terms of the order, I've just, uh, I've just written down uh, a couple of notes for myself in terms of the order I'd like to cover this off in. So I'm gonna start with Twitter, move on to YouTube, Instagram, and then the 800 pound gorilla Facebook last. So let's get straight into it. Uh, when it comes to Twitter live streaming, uh, as many of you may already know, Twitter really got the jump on everyone else in terms of live streaming. They were one of the first to offer live streaming uh, as a major service, as a major adjunct to their, econ uh, sorry, as, to their social platform. However, they offered it as a separate and distinctive Periscope app. Now, um, I don't remember exactly how long those videos lasted on Periscope, but I think it was 48 hours. So you shot a live video on Periscope, you used the same login that you used for Twitter, uh, but it was a completely separate application, a completely separate user interface, wasn't incredibly user friendly. Um, the, the, the content had a time limit to it in terms of when it expired and when it went away. So it just, it just really wasn't fulfilling a lot of the needs that live streamers really had and a lot of the goals that they had out of their live streams. So now they've integrated it directly into the Twitter application. So uh, I'll even show it to you, just show it to you on my screen. Uh, when you go to create a new tweet, you have the opportunity, uh, as you can see there, you'll see there's three, three options there. You've got photo, video, and live. Hopefully you guys can see that nice and clear. And when you select the live option, you're actually activating the Periscope application, which is now embedded within Twitter. Now the beauty about the embed is that it makes it really, really seamless to use. It makes it as easy to shoot live video as it does regular video and take a photo. So it's really, really seamlessly integrated. Click the button, start recording. It, 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 well, before you even start recording, you, you, can, you can hashtag, you can, put a, you can put a description of what the video is about, and it does support hashtags as per normal on Twitter. You start your recording, you do your recording, you stop your recording, and then it embeds that live recording directly within the tweet. And then that content doesn't expire, it stays in your feed forever. Now, it does, one of the downsides of Twitter is the fact that unlike Facebook and some of the other platforms, it doesn't allow you to identify really easily in your stream um, uh, video content or any content for that matter because it's chronological. So being able to break out 
content and maybe maybe be able to just see live video from a specific connection that you had won't be able to do it you can go into the, uh, the it does have the option when you go into and I'll just show it to you here once again it does have the option of going into media there's a media tab so there's tweets media and likes you can see that right there when you go into a specific connections profile um, however, wh what it considers media is a whole range of things. It's not just video. It's any embedded, embedded piece of media. So it could be a still shot. It could be a video. So it doesn't really help you narrow it down that much more, although it does narrow it down a little bit. So if you're starting to look for those, um, there are better ways in which to find streaming content on the other platforms. So I think that I think that Twitter has some work to do in terms of their search and find interface for content like that. Uh, but certainly with the tagging, the hashtag tagging and the fact that that the content doesn't expire, that it stays as part of your tweet forever unless you choose to delete it, fantastic upside. And so I'm starting to use that Periscope function a little bit more now that it's no longer a separate application. Now, if we're to move on to the, uh, to, I guess, the next major platform that I want to cover off, which is YouTube, it's very interesting about YouTube. Now, they made an announcement in early 2016 that they were going to start including the live, the YouTube live functionality uh, within, directly within the iOS app. Now, I remember, unless I'm going absolutely crazy, which is entirely possible, I distinctly remember towards the latter part of 2016, and one of the upgrades of my iOS app for YouTube, I noticed that there was a live streaming function when you hit the record button like you would for a video, uh, like you would for a normal video. Now, that's no longer there anymore, so I don't know if it was in one of the upgrade cycles, they removed it again, but they definitely said they were bringing it to the application. So if I click record on YouTube here on my app, it's just got the regular record up top. It doesn't say go live. That's not one of the options. So it looks like they've taken it back out again or I'm crazy and it was never there to begin with. But what you have nowadays, so, so I would be, you know, I think there will be a lot more adoption of the YouTube functionality for live once they embed it or once they make it available, a default feature within the native application. Until that happens, I think they're gonna see a, a slowish amount of uptake of that. They've always had it available in the desktop environment with your with your plug-in cameras uh, and it's still available in the desktop environment when you go into your account within YouTube but it's not yet available from what I can see anyway uh, in the YouTube iOS app and I would assume it's the same for Android. Now, however, what you do have is you have a whole bunch of third-party applications that connect to the YouTube API and once you log into those applications using your Google account that you use for YouTube, um, then you can live stream directly from one of these mobile applications and it will live stream to your YouTube account. So not quite as seamless, not part of the standard YouTube app, but there's this, there's this application called Emoze and hopefully you can see it sitting there on my screen, E-M-O-Z-E. And I'm just gonna activate that now and I'll show you just how easy it is to go live. So as soon as you start up the application, it's taking just a bit of time to start up here, but as you can see, there's the big go live button right in the middle of the screen there, so it's that simple. So click go live and it will stream it directly to your account and uh, it will stream it directly to your YouTube account. You can put in what the video is about, etc. And then of course you can, once it's, once it's uploaded to your account, it's stored just like any other video that's uploaded to your channel. You can go in and you can edit it. You can edit the description. You can edit the thumbnail. You can do all sorts of editing to that video just like you would any other video. However, for the time being, it's separate applications. Like I said, I swear it was in there at some point. It doesn't appear to be now. It'll be much more seamless and work a lot better once it's part of the default app. Now, why would you want to use Twitter or YouTube? Well, in general, live streaming is getting a lot more organic reach across these platforms than any other form of media, any other form of tweet, any other form of video, whether it's pre-recorded or a standard tweet. The, all of these platforms are emphasizing the value of live content and that means that they're giving pride of place in terms of the algorithm to live content and that makes a lot of sense because people li like the concept, they like consuming live content, so much more raw, it's not edited, it's not as polished, it's not as pretty, but it's, but it's much more authentic. It comes across as much more authentic. So it makes sense why they would emphasize that in their, in their organic algorithms. Um, and I think we're gonna see that only increase, at least for the, for the foreseeable future, we're gonna see them placing a lot more emphasis on live streaming versus pre-recorded video or photos. Now, the next, uh, the next platform that I will go on to, and I won't spend a lot of time on there, 
is Instagram. So as the baby brother to Facebook, obviously uh, Facebook Live came first. They kind of perfected that whole live streaming thing on Facebook and then they moved a lot of that functionality over to Instagram with one major caveat. And that is that when you go live on Instagram and you complete a live stream, that content is gone forever. It is not saved in any way, shape or form. Now there are some upsides to that. The, the downside is the fact that you create this content and it never remains evergreen content. So unfortunately you, you're not able to tag it, you're not able to have it as part of your standard stream and therefore uh, it doesn't generate any more leads or traffic after you've stopped streaming um, and that's unfortunate because obviously you don't get to save that content. Now understand why Instagram has done that. They've got the Big Brother Facebook. If you want to do something where it saves the video then go do it on Facebook Live. If you want something that's ephemeral, that doesn't last, that has a short lifespan, then you do it on Instagram. Now the other benefit of, of that time limited nature of Instagram is that everybody knows it's time limited. Everybody knows that an Instagram live stream is going to be gone the moment it stops streaming. So that generates definitely a sense of urgency about viewing that content. So it can definitely draw in an, a live audience much, much quicker. Um, that is the upside because people know it's going to stop and then they miss out. So it generates that sense of urgency to come and view that content straight away. Now the other thing about Instagram is that you can see up at the top of my feed, my stream there, that all of the Instagram stories, all of my connections that have Instagram stories available right at the top of the feed there. Now I don't have any of my connections that are live right now, however if they were, uh, they would be showing up at the left hand side and live takes pride of place. So if anybody's live, it looks like a standard Instagram story but it's actually not and there's a little live logo on there to indicate that they're live. Now the other thing that Instagram does is it will notify a certain percentage of your followers. They don't tell you, uh, they don't tell you exactly what the algorithm is. We can make some assumptions but they certainly broadcast to a number of your followers that you have gone live. Now if you turn on notifications, so if you've got turn on post notifications, if you've got that turned on for somebody that you follow, then you will always, or at least in my experience, you will always get notified when they go live. So you'll never miss out when they go live. If you don't have post notifications turned on, you're leaving it up to Instagram to decide when you find out on a percentage basis. It's not going to be all the time, but you're going to find out some of the times when some of your connections and some of the people you follow go live. Now that's another reason why you'll want to encourage your followers to turn on post notifications to make sure they always know when you go live, otherwise you're leaving it up to chance uh, that a certain percentage of your followers are going to find out when you go live. Once again, the biggest benefit uh, of all of Instagram, there's a couple of different things. One is it's, it's starting to take pride of place right at the head of stories. Stories is relatively new as well, but it's definitely getting pride of place over that. The other thing that you're finding is that when you go into search, when you go into Instagram search, uh, it, stories are now showing at the top of search as well, but live always once again gets product place. You can see it right there when I go into search, top left hand side. You can see that the, the live, the, the people that are streaming live uh, get pride of place up there in the stories timeline if you will or the story, stories selection. So definitely Instagram putting a lot of emphasis on the live product, so very, very interesting indeed. Now the last one that I'll talk about is Facebook. It truly is the 800 pound gorilla of social media networks and they have one of the best live functionalities available across social. Beauty of the content is that it gets stored, it's easily searchable when you're on a, a brand page if you will or a personal page. Um, you can go to the videos tab and you will see the live videos that were stored um, to that area. Uh, of content, you will see them stored in the same way as any uploaded, pre-recorded and uploaded video to that page. So there's no, there's no discrimination in that sense. It, it, when, you, when you're finished live streaming, it stores it as if it was any other type of video that you would upload to Facebook. So that's nice because that becomes evergreen content that people can always view at some stage in the future if they wish. It also shows the interaction that happens throughout that video even when it's on replay after it's been saved it will show the interactions, it will show the comments, it will show the hearts, the likes, all of the interaction that was happening. It will show the little timeline graph of, of when that was happening, when those peaks and troughs happened in terms of the interaction with the live stream. So very, very nice functionality. 
the downside of Live that I have found is that it's slightly unstable. So Facebook Live, as you're transitioning from 3G to wireless, for example, um, or back onto 3G, again, uh, you know, going in and out of Wi-Fi and 3 or 4G, uh, I find it can lock up the application and you'll lose not only your stream, but everything you've streamed to that point gets lost as well because it actually locks up the iOS app and you actually have to kill the application. So of course, it loses everything that you've st saved so far. So you definitely want to have a pretty stable internet connection that isn't going to be chopping and changing um, whilst you're streaming. Facebook Live has definitely started to take pride of place for a lot of different both personal and large brands uh, and even radio uh, news stations rather have started to use Facebook Live on site as their live streaming medium of choice and possibly even as an adjunct to their live TV broadcasts. So definitely, definitely starting to hit their stride there with Facebook. So, um, you know, there's definitely some massive benefits to using Facebook. You, you've got that long term of the content, long term lifespan of the, of the content. It's evergreen in that sense. Uh, you also have the ease of use. The application is super easy to use. It's just like a normal post, but instead of doing photos, um, and, I'll, and I'll just show you very, very quickly what that interface looks like. You probably already know anyway, but just for the purposes of this video, I'll just go ahead and publish a new post. And when I go to publish a new post, you'll see this photo video, there's live video, there's checking in feeling or activity. You'll be able to see it right there. And you just click on live video, put a description of your video, which once again is editable after you complete your live stream and the video is saved to your video archive. You are able to edit that and modify that as required to add additional information if you so desire, which is a really, really nice feature as well. So uh, there's definitely some upside to using Facebook Live for sure. Um, when it comes to, to equipment, um, the vast majority of the time, it's going to be this right here. It's going to be your smartphone. Now one of the downsides of Facebook Live is the fact that they allow you to pipe in a live stream via API. Now, unfortunately, what that means is you, you add the, the live flag to that when you're pushing it in via API. And this is really for the, for the bigger brands out there, the people that understand technical integration and, and are, are a little bit more, more, more au fait with the technical side of the internet and API connectivity or web services connectivity. But one of the downsides of it is the fact that someone can record a video, they can highly edit it, they can polish it, they can, they can do post-production on it, and then they can push that via API into Facebook and they can tag it as a live stream and it will show up as if it's a live stream. Now the negative of that is that you can't really trust Facebook, when you see somebody go live on Facebook or you're looking at something that you think was a live stream at some point because it's showing as a live video, not always. If they've pushed it in via API and they've tagged it as a live broadcast, it will show as a live stream. So I'm a little bit disappointed in Facebook. I actually think they've devalued and, and diluted some of the value of that live functionality because people can game the system through the API. And it's only the bigger players that have the technical nous, the technical capability, probably work with a developer um, to be able to create that API connection and get that content pushed into Facebook. So it really gives, it gives larger individual brands and larger, larger main corporate brands definitely a, an advantage in that sense in that they can push in content that has much better organic reach um, and, and just by t simply tagging it as live. So I don't really like that about it. I don't trust those broadcasts. I've seen content from some people that I know for a fact I've seen it on the YouTube channel a month before and then all of a sudden I see it pop up in their live stream, their Facebook live stream and I know for a fact it's not live plus it's highly edited. So a little bit disappointed but still still in terms of overall functionality I think Facebook Live has just about everybody trumped. Now what about content that, that when you're streaming live has copyrighted content in it. So let's say there's, a, there's a, a, a stereo, let's say you're at a big concert or let's say you're, let's say you're even at your office or you're at a, a work event or something like that and there's music playing in the background that is copyrighted music and it makes its way into your live stream. Well, so far it looks like live is a bit of a gray area and most of the content owners are not clamping down on live streams because there's a reasonable fair use, I guess, expectation around that. Whereas some of your pre-recorded videos, certainly on YouTube, certainly on Facebook, Instagram, etc., if you pre-record video and you upload it and it's got a, a music track, let's say you had Spotify playing in the background whilst you were recording a video and then you upload that to those platforms, 
they will oftentimes delete the audio component if copyrighted material is detected within that content. So definitely a bit of censorship going on there, uh, falling in line with the RIAA and a few of the other content rights holders. Um, so it's a really, really interesting gray area that's developing with live broadcasts that they seem to fall outside that dragnet of copyright um, that normally applies to pre-recorded video. So it's going to be really, really interesting to see if they do clamp down on that because they certainly have the technology, Shazam-like technology that they can use on live streams. So in the future, are they going to cut off your live stream if there's music that's copyrighted playing in the background? It remains to be seen, but for the time being, looks like you're going to be able to get away with it. So that's another bonus to live streaming. But overall, the biggest benefit of all is the fact that all of these platforms are emphasizing live streaming as part of their organic reach algorithm. It has better reach than just about any other form of content you could choose to put up. So when you're looking at Facebook, for example, uh, I've done tests uh, of this to, to just test engagement, just in a, in a pretty broad way. You know uploading an embedded YouTube video, putting that link up and embedding it in a post versus pre-recorded video that gets uploaded natively to Facebook versus live video on Facebook that's recorded in real time on Facebook Live. Definitely Facebook Live gets the best penetration, gets the best organic reach, it gets the best interactions, um, and it tends to, um, tends to appear to have the broadest aud audience as well. And, and certainly testing this on behalf of both my own personal brand as well as my local squash club, etc. It, it, it certainly seems to notify friends of friends as well and, and also friends of people that choose to follow your page that you've gone live. So certainly that penetration and notification seems to be much, much greater with live versus pre-recorded video. So hopefully you found this information helpful. Like I said, I think live video is where it's at for 2017 and beyond. Uh, you know, there's going to be a flood of major brands that are starting to do live content on a regular basis because once again has that high authenticity factor. They don't have to polish it. They have to spend so much time and money in post-production before they can get a piece of content out there. It's, 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 a, it's a little more raw. It's a little more seat of the pants. So as long as they can find staff and people and employees that can produce that live content that's engaging and they have a personality, of course like I do, that can, um, that can withstand kind of that, that live scrutiny and that live interaction, then I think those are the brands that are going to be the winners in 2017. Let me know what your thoughts are about live. Do you use live? Which platforms do you do it on? And what kind of engagement have you seen through live streaming on social media? Talk to you guys soon. Cheers.